Hi, I'm Dixon. In this video, we'll be talking about an advanced feature called SQL Analytic Functions. And these functions let you compute a value for each row based on other rows, uh, and that collection of other rows is called a window. Uh, this is different from group by, because in group by you have to group the rows first and then compute values for the group. For analytic functions, you can actually compute a value for each individual row. So what sort of values can we compute? Well, these are the three types of analytic functions. The first type is a numbering function, such as row number and rank. So row number, I can say what the number of a row is in its window. The second type is navigational. So with navigational functions, you can look up values of the following or the uh, preceding row uh, in your window. And then the third type of analytic function is aggregate analytic functions, and these look familiar. You can sum, count, or average the window that the row belongs to. All right, now let's move on to uh, talk about how you define this window. So in SQL, windows are defined using the over keyword. Uh, and then the three uh, subclauses are optional. The first subclause, partition by, you can think of as putting together relevant rows. For example, when you're ranking weights, you might only want to rank weights within each age bucket because adults are very different from children. So that's where you can partition by age bucket. Then, uh, the next thing you can do with a window is you can order by a particular value uh, within that partition. And then finally, you can adjust the size of your window using rows or range. So these are all the keywords you'll need to know. Let's dive into some examples. Our first example is to compute the rank of each row uh, relative to their age bucket. Casey is the heaviest child followed by Danny and Fanny, so they both take ranking number two, and finally Ellen at number four. To keep this original table, we say select star. But now we want to also include a column for this rank. This is where the analytic function comes in. We use the rank function, but what are we ranking over? So we want two distinct groups here, right? So we're going to partition this existing table into groups based on age bucket. So this is partition by age bucket. So now we're able to distinguish between rows for adult and rows for child. Then the next thing we want to do after that is we need to order the rows within the partition. So this is where order by comes in. And notice that this order by is separate from the overall queries order by. We're only ordering rows within the partitions that we've just defined. So we're going to order by weight. And since we want the largest weights to come first, we're going to say descending. And that is the query for computing rank partitioned by age bucket. And our second example is cumulative sum. Looking at adults only, Alex should start at 190, Brooke, is 190 plus 132, which is 322. As the name implies, we're going to sum over which column? We're going to sum over weight. But this is not your typical group by sum because we're going to sum for a particular window for every single row. So how do we define the windows here? We use the over keyword again. Then we're partitioning by age bucket as before. We want to create separate partitions based on each value of this column. So partition by, but first what we need to do is order the weights within each partition. Um, order by weight this 
descending. But what this will give us, if we say some way over these partitions, we're just going to get uh, the sum of all rows within the partition. But what we actually want is we want to get every row above this uh, particular weight here. So Danny should have Danny and Casey's weight. We express this through rows between. This keyword will s help us choose the rows um, from this partition that we want to include in this uh, final sum here. So looking at Casey's example, what we'll see is we want the rows preceding Casey, but there's nothing, and itself. So for Danny, it's everything preceding Danny and Danny, him or herself. Then Fanny, we want to include Fanny, Danny, and Casey. We now see a pattern that we want to follow for every single window here. Um, and the way we want, we specify all rows uh, preceding uh, yourself is to say unbound preceding and current row. Of course you might wonder, hey, this is, <laughs> these are so many keywords for such a simple task. Well, uh, the default of SQL is to just um, assume that the current row ends a window of unbound proceedings. So you can just summarize this into rows uh, unbound proceeding. So these two are basically equivalent. And now our third example is moving average. So we're averaging weights as before. So AVG of weights over, in this case, we don't care about H bucket anymore, so the partition by is optional. You don't need to include it. But what we do need to specify for our window is we just want the rows uh, right before and right after, right? So then for this first row, Alex, the moving average is 190 plus 132 over two, which is 161. There are only two rows here. Now for Brooke, we want to include Alex, Brooke, and Casey in the average to get 136. So how do we express that? Again, uh, we limit the rows that will be a part of the window. We want just one row above and one row below. So one preceding, and one following. So this will now give you the moving average for like a three row window, including yourself across the entire data set. All right, for this fourth example, we're going to describe how to use the range keyword instead of the rows keyword to specify your window. So in this case, let's say we wanted to count the number of uh, other uh, people in this data set within 30 pounds of this specific row. So for Ellen, you have, uh, Ellen has two friends who are within 30 pounds of 32. So that's three. We're counting this time. And since we're counting rows, it doesn't really matter what we put in here. We can say star, we can say one. Now this window is going to use range, but before we can use range, we have to sort uh, the range that we're going to um, compute. In this case, our range is based on weight. So we're going to order by weight. And once we have this order by, we can now use a range. So our range, is 30 pounds before or 30 pounds after. So we can say range between 30 preceding and 30 following. 
with rows, the number equals to the number of rows. And then for range, this number corresponds to the value of what you're ordering by. So that is why ordering by is required for a range, because otherwise SQL has no idea how to interpret the numbers that you provide over there. And so this is an example of using the range keyword instead of the rows keyword to describe what you want to uh, do for your window size. And again, to illustrate here, the window for Ellen will end up encompassing uh, these three rows, but it's the range from uh, 2 to 62. Finally, let's go through navigational functions. So these are a few navigational functions you can use with analytic functions. Um, and what do they correspond to? So let's say the row you're looking at is this row number 30. Then the first value of this row will be 10. Lag of 30 will refer to 20. Lead of 30 will refer to 40. And last value of 30 will refer to 50. So with that in mind, we have a problem here where we need to find the heavier person of a given row in the age bucket. So Alex and Casey are the heaviest. We don't need to return a name. For Brooke, the heavier person is Alex. For Fanny, the heavier person is Casey. How do we express this in SQL? For the analytic function, we're going to use lead here. Lead will give us the heavier person. So lead, and then what do we want from the following row? We want the name, we don't want the weight. So uh, we say lead of name over, and now what is our partition? Our partition is using the age bucket column. Partition by age bucket. And then after that, we can't just partition, we have to order, right? Because we want the heavier person to be in the lead. So then we need to order by weight. And then if we use lead, then we want to go in ascending order. And that is it for navigational functions. Thank you for watching. If you have ideas of concepts that you'd like me to go over, leave them in the comments below. Also, shout out to my friend Wells for giving me the microphone uh, for a much better setup than seven years ago. I'll see you in the next video.